Today, we're in Vancouver, British Columbia, where Purolator is trialing five motive-powered step fans. In the 1990s, the city of Vancouver set out to become the greenest city. And in 2020, its council approved one of the first climate action plans in the world. With ambitious targets like these, the pressure is on to meet or exceed net zero targets. Let's see how Purolator and Motive are working on these. My name is Alexander Schaumann. I am a courier at Purolator, and I became a courier driver 15 years ago. Yeah, my kids do know that I'm driving a vehicle that's electric. I've definitely taken a couple selfies with it and sent that to them. They tell their friends, you know, at school, and it's nice to know that I'm not polluting the environment with a truck that uses fossil fuels. We've taken that step forward. We're really proud. We're the first national company to deploy a fully electric vehicle. In addition to Toronto and Montreal, we've deployed five fully electric curbside vehicles here in Vancouver. Our goal is to become the greenest career company in Canada. You know, we've got a long history of trying new things, deploying new technologies. In 2005, we deployed over 200 hybrid electric vehicles. It's really about continuing that journey. Moto's been fantastic. They brought a technician up from California uh, and he's dedicated to our fleet. And uh, it's been a great partnership. So since 2009, Motive has been a pioneer in the EV commercial space. We've been producing mainly medium duty vehicles with the four through six class, mainly step vans, but shuttles, shuttle buses, trolleys, and work vehicles. Really exciting, because you have big companies where they have their giant name plastered on the side of this electric vehicle that they're now using. It's a very exciting thing. We have an entire department on it now with a director of sustainability, and their entire role is just working on things like electric vehicles. It's been fantastic for Pure Layer. We spent a lot of time on the change management, even before we even rolled them out. We just had them sitting out there. We spent lots of time talking to people about them, and, and we've had no reliability issues at all. So this is the engine bay of the vehicle. This is where a lot of our HV components and controllers will sit for the powertrain system. The uh, motor sits slightly further back here and the HV batteries sit along the frame rail of the vehicle. We've definitely had, you know, a couple of the other courier companies when they go out and we do deliveries with them, they see the truck and they're just like, wow, we don't have electric trucks yet. I wonder when we're getting some, right? And then they always have that question, you know, how is it for the range? Does it last all day? And I'm glad to tell them, yeah, it does last the whole day. They're just like, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. You don't really have to deal with range anxiety too much on our vehicles because we do have the industry standard J1772 outlet on it. Even if you were to run out of charge in the field anywhere, it would be easy to pull up an app or search online for the nearest charge station. What the pandemic has done really is just accelerated an already kind of significant growth trajectory that's been built off you know consumer preference and e-commerce so in the next 10 years we plan to have 1800 electric vehicles on the road i feel proud knowing that we've you know initiated something that you know other companies haven't tried yet i was literally the first person to get trained i was the first person to test it out on a delivery uh, and i'm proud to be able to say that